Hey guys, welcome back to part 6 of the constraint layout tutorial. So in the last video we learned about placeholders with which you could add some simple animations on single views. And in this video we will take a look at constraint sets with which you can animate whole layout transitions at once. And this makes it possible to create some really nice effects. And the best thing about this is that it's really easy to implement, even for a beginner. For this I have already prepared this layout and then I have just copy pasted it. Change the name a bit in this example to activity main alt for alternative. And in here we have the same views as we have in the other layout, but I have just rearranged this by changing the constraints. So this is two times the same layout, just with different constraints. And it's important to note that this dummy text we have here in the second layout is also in the first layout, right here. But it's just not visible because it has a height of 0 dp and no vertical constraints. And if you look closely, you can see it at the bottom here, it's this blue line. It just has a height of zero, so it's not visible. And it's important that this text view is in our first layout, because if we would just delete it here, it would not appear in our second layout when we do the transition, because it only changes the constraints. It doesn't add or remove views from the constraint layout. Okay, so in a nutshell, two times the same layout, just with different constraints. And also we still have our swap view method, but this time we call it when we click on the constraint layout itself. So anywhere on the screen, basically. And when we go into Java code, we have our swap view method here, and right now it's empty. And now we want to add this layout transition. For this we need some variables. First one for our constraint layout itself, like last time we call it layout. And now we need two constraint set variables. We call the first one constraint set alt for our first layout, and we initialize it as a new constraint set like this. And the second one for our alternative layout, constraint set, constraint set new, equals new constraint set. And we will create one boolean which will check which layout we have applied at the moment. We call it alt layout. We assign our layout variable in on create as usual, find view by idea, and the idea of our constraint layout, which is the same as in our last video, r.id.layout. And now comes the interesting part. We want to assign our two constraint set variables. And as the name of this class implies, this contains the information about constraints in the layout. So which views have which constraints, what margins, and so on. And now there are different ways to assign this. We want our first constraint set to contain the constraints of our default layout. So we write constraints at old dot clone, and here we pass our constraint layout itself, and that's it. This will take all the constraints of our default layout and add them into this constraint set variable. For our second layout, we do it differently. Constraints at new dot clone as well. But this time we don't pass an instance of constraint layout, instead we pass the context first, comma, and then the layout resource ID. r.layout.activity main alt is our second layout. Now this constraint set new contains all the constraints of our alternative layout. And now we only have to apply this constraint set on our layout at runtime, and that's basically it. Now the same as last time we can animate these transitions with the transition manager, dot begin delay transition method, where we pass our constraint layout. But you don't have to animate it, you can also make this layout change without any animation at all. And then we check if add layout, which is our boolean, is false, then we want to apply our alternative layout. So we take our constraint set new, which is the constraint set of our alternative layout, call.apply to, and pass our constraint layout variable. Now we also set our boolean to true, because now we have our alternative layout applied. Else, if alt layout is false, then we want to do the opposite. We want to take our constraints at alt, which is our original layout, and apply it back to our constraint layout. And change our alt layout variable to false again. And that's already it. Let's test it. Okay, this is our first layout, and when we click anywhere, we call our swap view method, which animates our layout to its new constraint set. Nice. Now a few things to mention here. These constraint sets only contain the constraints, sizes and margins in the layout. They don't contain any specific attributes of particular views, like text size of a text view or the background color. Those attributes will not be changed when you make this transition, but this also means that you don't have to refactor both layouts if you make any changes here. So if we decide to change the text size of this headline, for example, or the background color, we only have to do it in our first layout. This also means that loading these Constraint sets is a cheaper process than inflating a whole layout, so you shouldn't really worry about doing this here. But instead of cloning these constraint sets here from the layouts, 
You can also change and add constraints dynamically in Java code. So you can take a constraint set and then you have different methods available. You can change the height, visibility, you can add whole constraints with connect. But this goes beyond the scope of this tutorial, so if you want to know how this works, you have to take a look at the documentation. And you can change values like the margin. This way you don't have to clone a whole layout. So this is useful if you only want to make some slight changes. Okay, and if you paid close attention, you'll notice that the transition is a bit different than in our first example. This is because in the other example I set a custom transition, which is very easy as well. For this I'm going to choose a predefined transition from the Android framework. Transition change bounds equals new change bounds, which is a transition subclass. But I don't want to go too much into detail about transitions, because this is a whole other topic. Just gonna call dot set interpolator, which changes how this transition behaves, and I pass a new overshoot interpolator, which creates this rubber band like animation. And now we only have to pass this transition as the second argument to our begin delay transition method here. Comma, change bounds. So let's run it again. And now we have this bounce effect, like in the first example. Okay, if this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of the constraint layout tutorial.